Yes, my name is Bench and welcome back to our rail tutorial series. In the previous video we were looking at our rotary rails and how we can apply it to this linear rail setup in all three axes. In this video we're going to look at all the ways that logic can interact with the rails. We pulled the ra rotary rails out, we'll cover that in a future video, but for now we'll look at all the different ways that we can interact with rails. The first one is how do we actually detect when something's on a rail? It's really simple. We can chuck an activation module down or a button. You can see the activation module will just switch on and it will constantly stay on. You have to manually switch it off. So it's good for detection like that. But otherwise, our rail button, on the other hand, will detect every time something goes by it. So you can see on corners, it'll flick twice. Even going up there, we can do it on all these edges. So the button's very powerful, especially when used with a flip-flop box block but we'll cover that in a future video so now how do we actually do undocking now undocking is really easy we can grab our activation module or we can grab a button and we can connect it to any rail block any rail block anywhere and what we can do is actually undock like so so we send a full signal we can either use it like that or we can use it with a button but you'll see now, I'm able to fly off. Now if I go and dock myself back to there again, you can see if I jump in, can't move around. If I go and hit that button, all it takes is a true signal and it flies off. Easily done. So that's undocking. And you can imagine that will be quite powerful. If I spin it around to get us going again, it will be very powerful in tandem with, say, a push effect to push it then off the dock. Whatever you want to do, you can have escape pods, you can have any other control. Now, we can still undock via our rail docker in the actual ship itself, but that's one way that we can undock through actually using the rails. The next thing we want to look at is how to actually control these rails themselves. So what we'll do is actually place a button down, and what we can do is actually control what these rails can change to. Now, the way this works is through a kind of swapping it out for what I tell you to turn into sort of setup. So in this case, what we'll do is we'll set up a bunch of them to mirror exactly what we have here. So we'll do it like this. You see, this one is facing this way. And what we can do is put it like that. So what we've set up is we've got a button or an activation module or you could do it with any other logic gate for that matter. And you can see we've got it with a block right next to it. And then we've selected with the same activation module or button or whatever it is, we've then selected a series of our rail blocks. Now if I push the button, what's the one that's just here? Look, it's changed. So you can change them all to become what you want them to be. Now if I created a, another button and put our rails down but pointed them in the opposite direction, you can see like that, and then I hit V on all the ones that I want to change. Now when I send the high signal or the active signal, it'll tell all these to turn into this block. And you can see that's how we change movement. So we can go back and forth, we can change it halfway through, and you can see it's constantly changing each time I push the button and the rail is updating dynamically, which is really cool. Now you remember in one of the first videos how when we actually created our dock, it wouldn't move because it was moving into a block which wasn't a rail block? Well, we can do that same thing here. You can see it's pointing towards me now to be able to create a way to stop. Now there's other ways that you could create a way to stop, but this is one of the easiest ways to do. Look, it doesn't take much logic knowledge at all to be able to get this sort of control to be able to go forward and back and stop. So you can see it kind of works like a crane, I guess. Stop and forward and it's like a conveyor. Um, all kinds of different controls that we have there. Now, what if we wanted to control this whole thing? Well, what we'll do is we'll take all of these out and we need to create a series of them. So we'll create the first one and we'll kind of mirror what we've got here. So we want to point it all forward, like so, and we want all these to go forward. And then 
we will create another one on top. Now I'm just going to link them together. So you can see we're going to push the one underneath and it'll send its logic up. And each time we go up, we'll change to another one. So we need to actually create a new one for each orientation. So you can see this one I'm orientating upwards because that's the next one in the series here. And we'll go up and we'll grab this one, put it into an activation again. Next we want to go sidewards like that one. And so we're just going to match exactly what we have here. Now because we're moving in all three axes, it's a little bit more blocks involved. But that's okay. Because once it's all set up, it'll all work all off itself, which is really cool. Alright, next one. And you'll see we need to use a one activation or one um, logic block per change that we're doing. So you can't put two next to each other and expect them to change multiple ones to the ones you want. You need to set it up like this. Um, and then we'll do the one on the one we're on at the moment, like so. Whoop. See, we've just messed that up. We actually need to do an activation module and then do that. We want to go like that. And we'll just make sure that this one on the bottom is doing it all. Sweet. So if we push this, we should see it start moving and everything else is set up the way we want. But what if we wanted to go backwards now? So we'll create one and start going backwards. So first things first, we'll spin it to point the other direction here. And we want it to go along. Now, note I'm not going to select this corner one because I actually need it to roll onto one pointing in this direction. Um, so we'll do that now. And you'll see exactly what I mean. So it's pointing in that direction and that's because it needs to roll onto that one to then move in that direction. And I've just done this thing again. Where I need to select that. like so. We'll then put this into the next activation and move it towards like that. And then we'll go up. So we find the up one. Assign it to the up one. Again, we want to push across, so instead of it being this side, it's the other side that we need to push across. So we'll need to set that up. So we'll rotate around. Now this might seem quite a lot of blocks involved to just do one simple thing, but it's the easiest way to get the most control out of your blocks. You can imagine if I had rotary blocks, I could also change them into linear blocks. So there's a lot of control. And that should be it. So now I can hit this stack, and you'll see the whole thing's changed direction. Now we're going in the other direction, you can see everything lines up, pointing across, so we actually get all the movement. Look at that. All these blocks still react the exact same way, even though they're not linked, because you don't need to do any linking, but you can see I've controlled the direction we're going all the way around. And we can even change it back, and we go back the other way. So that is controlling rail blocks. You can see we can change them to anything we want, we can have as many different setups of this as we need in order to do things and they can be obviously set up with logic gates to be able to influence and you can imagine using these blocks uh, we can also control things as well so let's do one more thing um, where we can grab a flip-flop block now we'll cover the flip-flop block and all the new logic blocks in the next video but as a little bit of a tease let's grab a flip-flop block that this actually can go into. Actually, let's put it away a little bit, like so. Well, we'll put one on this side and put it into the flip-flop and we'll put it into one there. And that's going to trigger the change. And let's grab a knot for this flip-flop and put that into the button on the other side. So now we can actually change it into two different states. 
If you don't get what exactly is happening, that's okay. We're going to cover it in a future video, but you can see we can have this whole thing automated without any control from us, which is really cool. But we'll cover all the new logic blocks in the next video. Until then, my name is Bench and I'll see you next time.